Here we are, guys. Down my local boat ramp. And just trying to get some mullet down here. It's a nice little bay in here. Down Summerland Point. And the mullet just seemed to hang in here because it's nice warm water. So I got my bait trap out there. I don't know if you guys can see it. But I'm also using bread on a hook with a float for the bigger mullet. And we're just trying to try to get some live bait. And if I can get enough live bait, we'll go for a drift early morning. And we'll get into some big flathead. Um, they find them irresistible, those big live mullet. So hopefully we can get at least 10. It'd be nice. And we'll see how we go tomorrow. Otherwise, it might be a change of plan, but hopefully we go all right. Looks like a good spot. I can see lots of little potties swimming around. They seem to be very wary of my bait trap out there, but we'll give it a bit of time and hopefully, hopefully get a few in there. Here we go. A nice little mullet here. This be perfect little live bait size. I can get him in. I sometimes can throw the hook quite easy. Look at that guys. Absolutely beautiful size there. Perfect for a big flathead. Get some water in this esky. Beautiful life bait size. I'm gonna get the right combination of a fluffy little bait, staying on the hook, and casting it out without it falling off your hook. If you can get those three things right, with a really tiny hook, you should have a good chance of catching some nice sized mullet. Got another one here. Beautiful size for live bait. Look at that. You don't get better than that. Perfect flathead bait. And here's a little bit of history on myself, guys. A little story from my younger days. I've always lived on the water from a young age. I think four years of age, my parents lived on the water to about the age of 30 I was when they finally moved away from there. Um, so I was fishing from a very young age. And I remember I had a little five Suzuki on a 10 foot tinny. And when I was six years of age, I was allowed to take it out by myself and go fishing. And I remember I was out in the boat one time fishing and the big police boat pulled up next to me and I didn't know what was going on. He's like, mate, do you know, what are you doing? And I said, I'm fishing. And he said, do your parents know you're out here? And I was like, yeah. And then he said, do you want to show me where you live? So... Off I drove and drove back to my parents' place. And my mum came out the front after the big police boat pulled up out the front. And he said to her, do you know your son's out here fishing by himself? And my mum replied, yeah, is there a law against that? Which in the 80s, I don't think there was a law against that. And that's just one of my many stories from my childhood. I tell my kids that story, they're quite amazed that I was out there by myself at six. This is my homemade mullet trap. Put a bit of pride into this. Made it out of perspex. Yeah, I got a lot of mullet in here. Well and surely got enough mullet in here. Probably, 
got the bigger ones on the hook. I'm definitely not going to keep all these. I'm going to let most of them go. I have, I don't know how many mallet are in there, but there is a lot. Yeah, homemade mallet trap. Cut a couple of holes, super glued the perspex to make the edge. And then just screw the little top, top, top on. Nice and simple. Very effective. I find it works better than any you can buy on the market when you make your own. As it does take a little bit more effort making your own, but you do get the pride of it working and doing the job. And there we have it, guys. Mullet trap work the treat. I must have caught about over 50 in the mullet trap, which is amazing because I made it myself, so I'm pretty happy with that. Caught six on the hook, the bigger ones. Didn't need to even use a hook and didn't even need a rod in the end. They caught that many in the trap. Not often you let 30 or 40 mullet go. Big seal. Alright, guys, nice simple setup today. Good one, here you go. 
Give me a bit of curry. Get him on the squid again. Looks like a snapper perhaps. It's hard to tell in this deep water. Yeah, it looks like a nice snapper. Beautiful snapper. Oh. Oh. It's a nice snapper, that one. It's getting up to 40 centimetres, that one. Absolutely beautiful. Top eating that snapper in the ocean. Nice clean fish. Best way to kill them, brain spike, straight there. Go. Another one there. Feels like another snapper. So oh, we have a beautiful parrotfish. Some people rave about these being good eating. Me and myself, I'm not a big fan. They're a bit mushy, the white, very white flesh. A little bit mushy for my likings. Some people like them. They're a beautiful fish. A leather jacket <laughs> on a huge broom hook. Anyway, I won't complain about that. They're one of my favourite eating fish, the leather jacket. They're a beautiful species too. Look at that. I'm not sure what breed that is actually. That beautiful looking fish. Ah, oh, leather jacket. Another leather jacket. Seems to be a few of these guys around at the moment. That's a bigger one than I got earlier. Look at that. Oh, I've got one here, guys. I feel like a bad one, actually. Can we get in there? Oh, a nice little snapper. Good to see they're on the bite. Carry this one. What do we got? Oh, nice. Nice pan snapper. Beautiful. Probably about 33, that one, 34. Nice fish. Whoa, these are getting bigger, these leather jackets. <laughs> That's beautiful. 
Absolutely beautiful. That's the thing with this bottom bashing, you get lots of variety, lots of bites. Kids would love it if they could handle the outside weather, outside swell I should say, but kids generally don't like outside fishing too much. Oh, he's giving me a bit of curry, this one. Oh, I might have jagged him by the feel of it. Ah. A lot of weight there. A lot of weight. Two fish. <laughs> Snapper and the cod. Jeez, somebody one after another. Probably another keeper snapper, but I've got enough fish, so I'm gonna be letting them go. Unless I get something really tickles my fancy, but look at that. Look at the colours on that. The blues. Gorgeous. Fish. That feels like a trevally, I think. Ah, oh, that still there. Beautiful trevally. Absolutely beautiful. The amount of variety off here is amazing. We'll let this guy go. Not many years for 10 pound braid. 15 pound Panonoska mono. It's just good fun. You know, you can use heavier, but this light line, look at that. <laughs> you can still land good fish. Just take your time, drag loose. It just adds a bit of fun to it. Double header of snapper here, guys. A double header of snapper. You can't beat that. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, I have to get a bit. I have to set the camera up for this one. Double head of a snapper. That top one's either beauty. He's probably about 40 centimeters. Might keep that one actually. Feed the family. It's been a while since I've been taking a feed of fish home. So, put him out of the That's 
that's what we have a yellow tail good live bait for kingfish or mulloway or slap baits they're good slap baits too I really don't need him, so I'll let him go. Oh. <laughs> a rather large something. I'm guessing it's a Port Jackson shark or something. It is really got a lot of weight. And I'm struggling to move it. Yep, there she is. The usual winter. It's another nice size Port Jackson actually. You get a lot of these in winter time, especially around the headlands. I think they're a protected species. The Port Jackson shark. Not that I'll be keeping him. I've got well and truly enough fish. Without adding a shark to my telly. Come on, mate. Valley. Beautiful to see. And there we go guys. Another successful adventure done. Caught well over 10 snapper. Two over 40, a couple of around 40 to 35 for dinner. Got three leather jackets and a couple of squid. And it was just a good day. Caught lots of variety out there, heaps of trally, yellowtail, Port Jackson shark, a bit of everything really. So glad I went out here. I enjoy eating these ocean fish. It was really nice plain eating fish. Get back to those five mullet another day. Might even put one of those snapper on the barbecue when I get home. Might give you a quick catch and cook. See how I feel when I get home. Anyway, let's go for a run in back to the boat ramp. Here you go, guys. Today, guys, we've done well. Got a few snapper, huge leather jacket, huge trevally, port jacket, star, did everything really, done well. Just gonna cook myself a bit of lunch now. Keep, when it's fresh like this, you don't wanna do anything to it really. Keep it simple. Plenty of salt, seafood's gotta have salt. In there. A bit of butter, a couple of knobs of butter in there as well. That's it, nice and easy. Don't even have to clean the barbecue. It'll probably be ready in about five, ten minutes. Probably ten minutes. 
Anyway, driving home after the fishing trip on the way home. And for the first time ever, seen a couple of blokes who pulled up waving their hands. And I thought, oh, what's going on here? And um, one of them yells out, love your videos. Now, that's the first time that's happened to me. I wasn't expecting it, obviously. But um, I really appreciated it. And it well makes the effort. So thumbs up, guys. Um, yeah. Well, that should just be about ready, guys. Might even put it on a plate. Got a bit of lemon here as as usual. Can't have seafood without lemon. Oh, look at that. Alright, I'm gonna get into this because I am wrapping it. up guys I will see you on the water for our next adventure for a new adventure oh, that's good. where I don't even know what we're gonna go for next week so it's a surprise to everyone all right see you on the water guys catch ya